By the late 19th century, humanity had already grown accustomed to the ticking of gears. Time was measured down to the second, yet it still depended on springs, weights, and the steady hand of a human. Pocket watches had to be wound every day, wall clocks, at least once a week. The Industrial Revolution demanded precision, but its power remained stubbornly mechanical. At that time, the idea of electric clocks existed only as a laboratory curiosity. In the 1840s, Scottish clockmaker Alexander Bain demonstrated that electromagnetic impulses could move a pendulum, but his experiments relied on external power, a battery or a telegraph line. None of these devices could function independently. That's why the reported appearance of the so-called Alderson self-powered chronometer, demonstrated in London in 1891, reads like an impossible episode in the history of science. A clock that needed no winding and no connection to any energy source defied the very physics of its time. Henry Alderson and His Principle The name Henry Alderson appears in the archives of the Royal Society of Engineers between 1890 and 1892. He is described as a clockmaker experimenter working in the field of electromagnetic oscillations. By background, Alderson was a craftsman, a graduate of the technical school at the London Polytechnic Institute. He held no academic degree, and had no financial patrons. Among the surviving records bearing his signature is the title of his invention, Chronos Eternum, Latin for Eternal Time. The accompanying description is remarkably brief. An electric pendulum regulator powered by the Earth's magnetic field and atmospheric potential. At the time, the notion of drawing energy from the Earth's electrostatic or magnetic field was considered absurd. Yet, studies in atmospheric electricity already existed, most notably those of Lord Kelvin and William Crookes. Alderson, it seems, was inspired by their work. From his surviving manuscripts, preserved in part within the archives of the Royal Institute of Physics, the principle of his mechanism can be reconstructed. The clock combined a pendulum generator with a receiver tuned to faint geomagnetic fluctuations. At the base of the case were two coils connected to a miniature capacitor, which charged through the potential difference between the metals of the housing, copper, nickel, and silver. Gradual variations in the Earth's magnetic field produced microcurrents strong enough to sustain the pendulum's motion. In this way, the pendulum did more than measure time. It drew its energy from the natural oscillations of the surrounding world. Alderson called it the resonance of the planet. The 1891 Experiment In the spring of 1891, Henry Alderson presented his device at a private meeting of the Engineers Club in the district of St. Marylebone, London. Three witnesses were present, a telegraph engineer, a professor of physics from Cambridge, and the secretary of the Royal Society. They observed the clock's operation continuously for 12 hours. According to the report by Professor Thomas Reed, the clock indeed ran without any external power source. The pendulum swung steadily, the hands moved at a constant rate, and the daily deviation measured only 0.8 seconds. When the mechanism was sealed beneath a glass dome, Fully isolated from static electricity, it did not stop. Reed noted in his journal, If the mechanism contains no hidden source of power, then what we are witnessing lies beyond the reach of modern electrodynamics. Yet doubts arose almost immediately. Some claimed Alderson had concealed a miniature chemical cell or galvanic element within the casing. Others speculated that the clock drew power from a hidden wire. No such evidence was found. Even so, the invention was never formally recognized, for lack of proof of a sustainable energy source. Disappearance and Rumors After the public debate, interest in Alderson's invention faded as suddenly as it had appeared. Several newspapers mocked him as the man trying to stop the sun with his hands, 
and soon after, Alderson himself vanished from London. Records suggest that in 1893 he left England for Germany, where he reportedly attempted to present his device to the Prussian Academy of Sciences. Beyond that, the trail goes cold. Yet, in the archives of the Royal Institute of Physics, a peculiar entry dated 1921 appears. A mechanism of unknown origin, resembling an electromagnetic clock, continues to tick despite the absence of an electrical source. Etched onto its casing were the words, Kronos Eternum, H.A. 1891. The device remained in the Institute's collection until 1941, when it disappeared amid the bombing of London. Officially, it is presumed destroyed. Modern Analysis In the 1970s, British research engineer David Hutton discovered surviving fragments of Alderson's notes in a private archive. Among them were coil schematics and brief annotations referring to a magnetic self-induction circuit with a tunable impulse. According to Hutton, the device resembled an early prototype of a resonant oscillatory loop, one capable of sustaining itself through interaction with an external magnetic field. Modern experiments with magnetostrictive generators have demonstrated that, in theory, it is possible to extract microwatts of energy from the Earth's weak geomagnetic fluctuations. However, that amount is insufficient to drive mechanical clock hands, unless an ultra-sensitive pendulum were used. Still, in principle, such a mechanism could exist, given a perfect balance of friction and weight. Physicists who have examined Alderson's reconstructed schematics note the remarkable precision of his calculations and his intuitive grasp of concepts that would not be formally described for decades, particularly electromagnetic resonance and self-oscillation phenomena. Some researchers even suggest that Alderson's electronic clock may have been the first device to employ elements of self-inductive power, a distant ancestor of today's energy harvesting systems, which draw power from the natural oscillations of the environment. Legends and Coincidences Among historians of science, legends persist. Stories claiming that Alderson's mechanism kept running for decades without maintenance. In the 1950s, short articles began to appear in American engineering journals mentioning a British chronometer that ticks without a power source. None included photographs, but all repeated the same curious detail, that the device supposedly gained one second per day. Some researchers attribute this to simple temperature drift in the pendulum. Others interpret it as evidence of an unexplained resonance effect within the mechanism itself. In 1984, British physicist Roger Mills proposed that the clock might have drawn on atmospheric potential, the difference in electric charge between the ground and the air, often reaching hundreds of volts per meter. If Alderson's casing featured sharp metallic points, it could have accumulated microcharges and transferred them to the coils. In this way, the clock without batteries may not have been a miracle at all, but rather an early attempt to build a device powered by its surroundings, a forerunner of today's energy autonomous sensors and self-charging wristwatches. Why the story was forgotten There are several reasons. First, Alderson was not a scientist with titles or credentials. His work was never published in peer-reviewed journals. Second, by the late 19th century, the very concept of electronic clocks did not yet exist. Electronics as a science would not emerge until 1904, when John Fleming invented the first vacuum tube. Even the term electron was only beginning to appear in 1891. Anyone claiming to have built a clock that winds itself was seen either as a mystic or a fraud. Meanwhile, the engineering community of the era was focused on steam turbines and telegraphy. Timekeeping simply wasn't a priority. Finally, the Great War erased countless laboratory archives. The papers of small, independent inventors, like Alderson, simply vanished.
Modern Reconstruction Attempts In the early 21st century, a number of engineering historians attempted to recreate Alderson's device based on the surviving descriptions. In 2009, a team of researchers from the Manchester Museum of Technology built a prototype called Kronos II, following the same principles. Two coils, a copper housing, a pendulum with a ferromagnetic core, and a miniature capacitor. The device did, in fact, begin to oscillate without any external power, drawing motion from the Earth's magnetic variations and faint environmental vibrations. The pendulum moved with an amplitude of less than a millimeter, yet remained stable. However, the output power was extremely low, and a small piezoelectric element had to be added to keep the clock hands moving. In the end, the modern reconstruction partially confirmed that the principle of a self-sustaining clock is physically possible, though its efficiency remains exceedingly small. Meaning and Legacy if Alderson's device was real, it would stand among the earliest examples of a perpetual mechanism, one that did not violate the laws of physics, but instead drew energy from its surroundings. That principle forms the foundation of today's energy harvesting technologies, wristwatches powered by sunlight, sensors sustained by the vibrations of buildings, wireless devices that gather power from ambient radio waves, an idea once dismissed as madness in 1891 became ordinary science a century later. For this reason, many historians of technology regard Kronos Eternum as a symbol of thinking far ahead of its time. Alderson never built a perpetual motion machine. He simply became the first to understand that nature itself is never still, and that if we learn to listen carefully, it will always give back a little of its energy. Conclusion The story of electronic clocks before batteries remains balanced on the edge between science and legend. No verified photographs exist, and no working specimen has survived. Yet, reports, diagrams, and witness statements remain. Together, they are enough to suggest that such an experiment did take place, and that its results puzzled even the skeptics. With every passing decade, scientists discover new ways to draw energy from ever smaller forces, from the thermoelectric effects to quantum fluctuations. And the further science advances, the more plausible the tale of a London clockmaker becomes. A man who made a pendulum swing without winding it. Perhaps Henry Alderson was never searching for perpetual motion. He was searching for perpetual time, that fragile point where energy and the passing of seconds merge into one. And if one day a dusty case marked Kronos Eternum resurfaces from an old archive, it will remind us that some discoveries were never lost. They were merely waiting for their century.